Hi everyone, we are excited to have you here in today's fun-filled learning session at YOLO. Here is a quick look at how you can submit your work after the class. As a first step, go to live.yolo.com. You can use any browser to access this site. On this page, you will see a list of all our classes. Scroll down and you can see the Submit Your Work button. And then you will see a list of the classes that you last attended which could, for example, show the dance or craft or science experiment classes you've attended recently. Next, it will show you the list of children whose names are registered in this mobile number. Choose your name from this list to submit your work. For instance, if you are Satvik Kumar, choose that name. And then, choose the class for which you would like to make your submission. For example, if you've attended the New Year's Masquerade Party session, and you'd like to make the submission for this class, click on the Submit Your Work button below that. And then upload the photo you've taken. Choose the image from your phone and click Submit. You can scroll down and view all your past submissions and see how many of your friends or peers have liked your work. You can also see others work and like their work to inspire your friends. If you want to showcase your work on social media, that too is very simple. Click on share, copy the link and post it on Instagram or Facebook or any other platform of your choice. Just a tiny reminder, your submission looks a lot better if you could click a photo in the landscape mode rather than the portrait mode. Do not forget to tag us at YOLO underscore app. I'm eagerly looking forward to all your submissions right after this class. Hey there kids, welcome back. Um, I hope you are excited for today's class and I'm very, very glad to see you join in today. So um, let's discuss the couple of things that you know we have to go ahead and discuss. But before that, I want to know, did you have a look at the submission video? Did it make sense to you on how to go ahead and make the submissions? Are you going ahead and making all of your submissions? So first and foremost, all of these are very, very important questions. And I hope all of you are going ahead and making your submissions um, because if you do go ahead and make your submissions what is going to happen is we're going to get a chance to go ahead and look at the mistakes you're making or get a chance to go ahead and figure out whether you're actually learning something from these classes that we are providing to you because as a teacher it's wonderful to see the work of our students because you know it encourages us to go ahead and move on and I do know the concept of making a submission and having us look at it also gives you some form of encouragement for you know from your end so I hope you've made made sense of the submission video and you've gone ahead and are going ahead and submitting all of your work. So let's get started with today's class. Um, and before that, let's discuss about the certificate program that we have announced. And I am so happy to go ahead and announce the certificate program. So what is the certificate program and how can you get a certificate? The certificate program mainly is that every course will now have a certificate that we'll go ahead and give you after every course. And how do you get the certificate? There are basically two steps in getting the certificate. Point A is basically going ahead and attending all of the classes in the course. So for example, in this course with the festive drawing, there are four classes in which you have to just go ahead and attend all of the four classes. The second uh, part of the sub certificate program is that you have to go ahead and make a submission in each of the classes. So for example, this course again has four classes. So you go ahead and make the four submissions and you will go ahead and get the certificate, pro uh, certificate right at the end. Now, what do certificates do? Certificates basically provide a form of proof of recognition that uh, you've gone ahead and attended a course like this and you are capable of going ahead and doing something that the certificate mentions. For example, if you're talking about the festive drawing course that we have done today, it gives you a recognition that you have gone ahead and learned how to draw these four festivals and in the future you are capable of doing it. So certificate is very, very important for your age and it's something that is very, very useful as you move forward in life. So make sure you attend all of your classes, make sure you go ahead and do all of your submissions. And what's going to happen is you're going to basically go ahead and get a beautiful certificate. 
the next thing that is very important is that all of you are now going to be part of the feedback um, thing that we have going on. That is, if you get selected as part of the top 10, then you will also get a personalized feedback from me as to what you're doing right or what you're doing wrong. Now, all of us obviously um, go ahead and create a lot of work, but do we know the mistakes that we are making? Do we know what we are going wrong with or what we are going correct with? And obviously, it is great to go ahead and get a form of feedback. So that is exactly the concept of this. And um, if you go ahead and do your submissions, get selected as part of that top 10, then I will be providing that feedback to you. So let's now talk about today's class. In today's class, the festival that we are going to be drawing is Pongal. Um, and let's discuss a little bit about what the purpose of this program is. Now, the purpose of this course is mainly uh, for you to go ahead and learn how to draw various festivals. It is for you to go ahead and learn how to draw and depict the festivities that you have been part of in your life. So, for example, let's take uh, Pongal for today. I know a lot of us celebrate Pongal. It's a very, very important festival festival for all of us and you know we have uh, experienced the festival a lot of the times but a lot of the times we still don't know how to go ahead and draw it now it could be an illustration they ask you to do in school it could be just something that you want to sit down and draw or it could be something like the festival is coming up and you want to go ahead and draw a card for it so in all of these situations having a good idea and depiction of what we have experienced in real life to paper is something fun and important and that's exactly what we're basically going to go ahead and do in this class. So let's go ahead and get started with all of the materials that we need for this class and then we can go ahead and move on to the drawing itself. All right. So the first thing that we need in today's class is basically going to be a sheet of paper. Now you can go ahead and use a sketchbook, a journal book, anything that you have with you like I have right now with me. All of those will work wonderfully. If you do not have a sketchbook, drawing book or anything that is like 100 GSM or 150 GSM, that is also totally fine. You can go ahead and use a a plain sheet of paper, a four size sheet of paper, or any unrolled sheet of paper that you have at home. The next thing that you need for today's class is obviously a pencil. The concept of today's class is basically the concept of depiction through drawing. So you will basically need a pencil to go ahead and draw all of your work. Try to have a pencil that is on the darker side and not on the lighter side, mainly because if it's on the darker side, then you will be able to draw a lot better and you'll be able to see a lot better and it's not too light. Once you have your pencil, the next thing that you need is a marker. Now here I have a black color sketch pen or marker. You can go ahead and use any number of sketch pens or only a black sketch pen. Now in today's class, what we're going to be doing is you're mainly going to be only drawing, but um, the submission or the homework bit for you is basically going to be to outline and color the picture. Now for the outlining and coloring of the picture, it is up to you and up to your creativity in terms of how you want to submit it. So for my picture, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a black marker and outline it and then fill it up with color. But if you feel you want to take various colors of sketch pens and you want to outline with different, different colors and then fill up with different, different um, colors in terms of your coloring portion of it as well, then that's absolutely up to you and you can take as many or as little sketch pens as you like. The next thing that we need for today's class is a bunch of uh, colors. The colors that I have today and I will be using are these color pencils. This is what I am going to be using. So you can go ahead and, you know, have if you have color pencils, you can go ahead and take color pencils. If you do not have color pencils, that's also completely OK. So here I have the Mepid color pencils and that's what I'm going to be using for you. If you have crayons, if you have soft pastels, if you have oil pastels, if you have paint or you have sketch pens, anything of your choice is going to be required for you to go ahead and fill with color. Now that again, like I mentioned, is up to you and what your creativity lies in. So go ahead and take whatever you like. 
So for today's drawing, like I mentioned, the festival of the day is basically Pongal and that is what we are going to be focusing on today. So for the first step, what we're going to basically go ahead and do is we're going to take a circular object. Now here I've just taken a simple white color bowl and I'm going to be drawing a circle and this is going to be the sun in the center of the page. If you do not have like a bowl like this, you can take a compass or you can go ahead and take any circular object around you. So Good examples could be like a bowl, a compass, you can go ahead and take a bangle, you can go ahead and take a tape roll, anything that you have with you, which is a circular shape, go ahead and take that and then draw a circle at the center of the page. Like so. So this is going to be step number one. So you don't have to have it exactly in the center of the page, just an approximate center of the page will do. Okay, I think everybody's done a wonderful job with this. Perfect. Well done. Everybody's done a wonderful job. So let's move on to the next step. The next step of our drawing is basically going to go ahead and be to draw a pot. So for the pot, so in terms of the pot, I'm basically talking about the um, earthen pot that we have, you know, the matka basically where we fill up with water. So in Pongal, a lot of the times what we have is we have a matka and we have butter in it. Um, and then we have the canes with us and, you know, we fly kites and all of that. So that's how Shankranti or Pongal is basically celebrated, right? So um, that is what we're going to be going ahead and drawing. So here I've gone ahead and done a simple long oval like this, and that's going to be the top part of my matka. After this, we're going to go ahead and draw two curves on either side uh, coming down like this, and then we're going to go ahead and do the circular portion of it. And now the circular portion. So here, if you have made any mistakes and you know you've gone ahead and made some form of error, please go ahead and correct it right away. I'm going to wait for you at this point of time. If you've made a mistake with your circle, if you've made a mistake with your matka, if you've made a mistake with anything at this point of time, please go ahead and correct it out because I do want you to go ahead and continue making the drawing wrong and having a mistake in it because later it's going to be an issue. So that is the first thing that you have to go ahead and do. Correct it out if you have made any mistakes because the next step what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and decorate the pot out. I think everybody's doing a good job. Well done. Everybody's done a wonderful job. So the next part of this is basically going to go ahead and decorate the pot. Now the decoration of the pot could be basically up to you. Um, you can go ahead and draw curves, you can go ahead and do rangoli designs, you can go ahead and do any form of design that you like. Now right now what I'm also going to go ahead and do is that overlapping of the sun on the matka I'm going to go ahead and erase out. You can go ahead and erase it out as well and fill up a design inside. What I am doing in terms of my design is I'm going to go ahead and draw double line curves and after every double line curve I'm filling in a design of my choice now the design of the choice like i mentioned could be a rangoli design could be a mandala design it could be any like you know basic shape so i've done like semicircles. now i'm doing triangles it could be squares lines anything completely up to you to go ahead and do so like you can follow what i am doing right now or you can do your own designs up to you completely so this is my finished design of the pot. If you feel like you want to do something else, go ahead and do so by all means. If you feel, no, I want to do the exact same thing, then I'm going to wait, go ahead and copy whatever I have done right now. All right, I think everybody's doing an excellent job. Such beautiful designs looking great. Excellent, excellent. Everybody's doing such a beautiful job. Great. Okay, I think everybody's done with their pots and the decorations of the pot. So let's move on to the next step of our drawing. For the next step of our drawing, basically, we're going to go ahead and draw sugar canes. 
so here you can go ahead and see that i've gone ahead and done a long oval that is the next step of our thing so what i'm going to basically do is i'm going to be drawing two sugar cane like plants basically with the leaves so how i'm doing it is i've gone ahead and drawn a double line with a curve on top a curve on the bottom or doing a long oval and we're going to repeat the same thing a couple of times so just have a look as to how i do it and then i'm going to play it again just in case you didn't get it so this is what you basically have to create. So you can see I've done four. So now you know what we're basically going forward with. So let me just go ahead and play that for you again, just in case you didn't get that. So you can see very, very simple, not joining them like, you know, at one go, doing one each at a time. So this is what you need right next to the matka. So that's the next part of our drawing. Make sure you are doing this neatly and not doing it um, in a haste because you want this to look like a good shape and you do not want it to look bad at all. So make sure you've done it neatly. Good, I think everybody has done a wonderful job. Now next part of it is basically going to be drawing the leaves of the um, sugarcane itself because it's obviously a plant which will have leaves on top if you have noticed sugarcane do have like this bunch of um, leaves on top so if you've ever drawn a sugarcane already or if you've gone ahead and drawn like a coconut tree it's very very similar to that it's just that in a coconut tree you have the corrugations in this you do not have the corrugations so what we're going to be doing is with that center dot we're going to go ahead and draw a curve line coming out and then in out and in so have a look at what i'm going to be doing get a hang of it by visually understanding what the shape is and then you can try on your own so you can see out in out in and this is what i'm going to be doing all around to fill up with that top part to make it look like a plant so this is exactly how it should be looking I think you've got a look on how it's supposed to look now let's go ahead and play that again so you can get a better idea There you go, perfect. As simple as that. Again, I'm gonna wait for a second in case you've made any mistakes and you need to correct it out, please go ahead and do so right away so that you know we don't have any mistakes that we need to work with later. Good, everybody's done a wonderful job. Now we'll draw the curve on top to complete it. So that's our sugarcane number one done. I'm going to go ahead and draw a second sugarcane in the same manner. So go ahead and see how I am doing it just in case you haven't got it or alongside me, go ahead and draw your second sugarcane right next to it. So you can see I've done the stalk, drawing the dot and then the sugarcane itself. And then all right so now i'm just going to wait for you again for a second i went pretty fast with my drawing right there because i have explained to you how to do it but i'm going to wait so that you know if you made any mistakes or you know you felt like you haven't uh, done it very neatly go ahead erase it out and correct it out let me just wait for all of you to complete it I think everybody's is looking very nice, looking great. Good, okay, everybody's is looking nice, so we can move on to the next step. All right, so for the next step, we're gonna go ahead and draw a bunch of flags in the sun part of it. So like you can see, I've basically gone ahead and done one curve and I'm going ahead and doing a double line for that curve because it's like a rope. Then I'm going to go ahead and draw a bunch of triangles to make it look like there is a flag or a like a strainer, you know, sort of flying around. So this is the next step, basically going ahead and drawing a double line and then basically going ahead and drawing a bunch of flags. Perfect. Once you're done with this, 
go ahead and do a second of this. Now, again, here as well, I've gone ahead and done a double line. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and draw triangles for the flags. Perfect. So again, here, I'm just going to wait for a second so that, you know, if you've made any mistakes or you need to go ahead and do something to correct it out go ahead and do it right now waiting for you before we move on okay good everybody is doing an excellent job doing great well done well done everybody okay good job so everybody's doing a good job let's move on to the next step now, the next step is basically drawing the foam part um, in the matka itself. So like a cloud shape is basically what we are going for and filling up the top of the matka. If you want at this point of time, you want to erase out a part of the flag and cover up the matka, you can go ahead and do so. I'm just drawing it behind the flag. That's completely up to you to do. Moving on to the next step, what I'm basically going ahead and drawing are some, you know, lines coming out. So obviously this is the season um, of harvest. Um, so you do have a lot of plants, you know, being harvested right now. So these three lines are sort of the plants for harvest that I've gone ahead and done. So just some three basic lines. The final thing that we're going to be going ahead and drawing are a few kites. I know all of us know that during Pongal time we draw and fly a bunch of kites. So we're going to basically first depict the clouds for the kites and then we're going to go ahead and draw the kites itself. So I've gone ahead and done one cloud right on one side, after which I'm going to fill up with several clouds. So you can have a look as to how I'm doing the same. drawing some simple clouds. Once you're done with the clouds, let me wait for you right there. So this is how it should be looking. The cloud should be looking. I think everybody is doing a good job. Again, if you've made any mistakes, go ahead and correct it right now. Almost done with our drawing. So if you've made any mistakes, correct it out immediately so that we don't have to correct it out later. Good. Everybody's done a wonderful job. So let's draw the kites. I'm drawing the kites coming down from below. So one curve, then drawing a plus symbol, and then joining all of the sides to create a kite. If you didn't catch that, let me play that for you again, because it might be a little confusing. So again, curve coming out, drawing a plus symbol, then joining each of those with slanting lines on the edges to create a cut. Then in the bottom, I'm drawing, drawing a tiny triangle and a line coming out. Same thing I'm gonna do once again, because I wanna add two guys. And there you go, we have our finished drawing. So like you can see, it's a very full picture wherein we have all of the elements of Pongil right here. It's a beautiful illustration and representation of what Pongil looks like. So if you have again made any mistakes anywhere you feel like, no, this is looking too empty and there should have been more in this because you've done it small or a little too big, then go ahead and correct it out immediately. I'm just going to wait for like um, two minutes so that you can go ahead and correct out if you've made any mistakes. Few spaces where I feel you could have made mistakes are, for example, around the clouds. If you've drawn too little clouds, it won't look great. If you've not gone ahead and drawn too enough leaves for your sugarcane, that could look bad. If you've not drawn enough flags for the flag part of it, the triangles, then that could be a mistake. The pot, if you're not filled up with enough designs, that could be a mistake. If you have too much space under the kite area or around the kite area, maybe you can add in another kite. So these could be like a few possibilities that you can go ahead and do. So correct it out just in case if you need to go ahead and do so. All right, everybody's done a wonderful job. Great, okay, great. 
So since all of you have finished up with your drawing, um, we have mostly done with the major drawing portion of this class. And what we're going to move on to now is basically going to be the discussion about how you're going to go ahead and do your submission. Now, once your drawing is done, like I said, for your homework and submission, you have to go ahead and outline this piece and fill in with color. I know it can be a little confusing for all of you um, in terms of what colors you need to use or what sort of outlining you want want to be there. So I'm also going to go ahead and describe the same to you before we end today's class. So in terms of the outlining, like I mentioned, all I went ahead and did was used a black marker to go ahead and outline. I didn't go ahead and use anything else. Just a simple black sketch pen is what I used to go ahead and outline. So this is how my piece looked once the whole picture was outlined. So in this um, to give you an example, if you want to go ahead and use colored sketch pens to outline, maybe you can go ahead and outline the clouds blue, the <clears throat> flags, the color you are planning to color it, um, the sugarcane uh, stalk brown, the leaves green color, the pot and the designs depending on the color you like, the sun you could do yellow. So all of that, those are like basic options in terms of what colors you can go ahead and outline with. <clears throat> And one thing that I want to make you realize and notice is that you can see right there what I'm pointing to right now. I've gone ahead and added a few dashes into the three lines that I had added there. So that is an extra addition which I've added in with sketch pen. So don't forget to do that. You can draw that out with pencil if you like right now or probably later when you're coloring or painting, you can go ahead and add that in later. Once you are done with this, I'm going to just show you the colored piece for me. So this is how I did my coloring bit of it. For the background, I basically went ahead and took a little bit of light blue and got, went ahead and did the whole light blue. The colors that I basically stuck through to, throughout this painting was orange, brown, red, green. So you can see I did brown for the stalks of the sugar cane with green as the leaves. The flags I stuck to green, red and yellow. The pot I went ahead and did orange, yellow, red, green. Um, and for the flags I went ahead and did red and green and red and yellow. Now the color scheme that you use is again completely up to you and here I went ahead and did it with color pencils. If you felt like no I don't want to do it with color pencils then I want to do painting or you want to go ahead and do soft pastels, oil pastels, all of that is completely up to you. There is no hard and fast rule in terms of what you have to go ahead and use in terms of your painting. Go ahead and use whatever you like in terms of your painting or your picture. So here we have our finished piece. So let's discuss how you will go ahead and make your submission and homework. So firstly, uh, most important thing uh, is go ahead, outline A. Second, go ahead and color and finally submit your picture. Now, few things before again, we end the class. The purpose of this class basically was to give you an idea of drawing and to go ahead and create a space where you could go ahead and fill with color. So that we have created for you. The second thing that is most important is the certificate program that I want to again bring up to you. Remember two steps for the certificate program. Point A, go ahead and attend all of your classes. Point B, go ahead and make all of your submissions and you will get a certificate at the end of the course. Second point, feedback. If you get selected as part of the top 10, you will get a personalized feedback from me and I definitely want you to go ahead and get a personalized feedback. So that is something as well I want you to keep in mind. Those are the two things. I hope you're going ahead and making submissions for each of the classes. In the next class, what we're going to basically do is we're going to be taking up the festival of Christmas. And I know we all love Christmas, the winter festival. We all absolutely love it. So make sure you attend the next class as well. Make sure you make a submission of this class, then attend the next class. And we will do a beautiful Christmas illustration in the next class. So have a look at the submission video and definitely make your submissions. See you in the next one. Bye. Hi everyone, we are excited to have you here in today's fun-filled learning session at YOLO. Here is a quick look at how you can submit your work after the class. 
As a first step, go to live.yolo.com. You can use any browser to access this site. On this page, you will see a list of all our classes. Scroll down and you can see the Submit Your Work button. And then you will see a list of the classes that you've last attended, which could, for example, show the dance or craft or science experiment classes you've attended recently. Next, it will show you the list of children whose names are registered in this mobile number. Choose your name from this list to submit your work. For instance, if you are Satvik Kumar, choose that name. And then choose the class for which you would like to make your submission. For example, if you've attended the New Year's Masquerade Party session and you'd like to make the submission for this class, click on the Submit Your Work button below that. And then upload the photo you've taken. Choose the image from your phone and click Submit. You can scroll down and view all your past submissions and see how many of your friends or peers have liked your work. You can also see others work and like their work to inspire your friends. If you want to showcase your work on social media, that too is very simple. Click on share, copy the link and post it on Instagram or Facebook or any other platform of your choice. Just a tiny reminder, your submission looks a lot better if you could click a photo in the landscape mode rather than the portrait mode. Do not forget to tag us at YOLO underscore app.